Good morning. Um, we're down in Cornwall now. Um, we're talking to Chris Tucker about standing hay. Uh, Chris, tell us about the farm, your cow numbers, your calving pattern and feeding, those sorts of things. Yeah, we're currently running uh, 280 crossbred milking cows, split um, split into autumn and spring calving blocks. And is that an equal split? That's about an equal split of 10-week uh, blocks, yeah. Okay. And grass, did you say grass base? Yeah, we're all grass. Uh, we, we graze cows for 10 months. 10 months a year and uh, feed grass silage in the winter. And what sort of yield are you achieving? Uh, we're doing about 6,000 6, litres from about a tonne of concentrate. Okay. What made you choose standing hay? Why, why, why standing hay? Um, we started with standing hay this time last year really. It was a field that we normally calve cows in anyway, so instead of cutting and big baling it, we decided that we would try standing hay as a form of reducing cost. When did you shut this paddock up? It was um, shut up at the middle of May. About eight weeks then, isn't it? About eight weeks growth, yeah. And that would be what you did last year, a standard sort of Yeah, that would be up. similar to last year. And how much do you lock up for your dry cows? What, what sort of area do you need? Uh, this, these, two, these two paddocks actually are um, three hectares, which is what we've locked up. There's um, 50 here at the moment. Okay. That'll increase. We've, we've you know, some of the guys have calved and we've got some more to dry off. So, uh, would you get to 80, 90 sort of numbers? Yeah, we would peak at about 80 or 90, yeah. How often do you move the fence and how far do you move it? We, f we shift the fence once a day. We're, this, this product that we're going into at the moment is, is a bit too, too mature really, so we're pre-mowing in, in front of the cows. Okay. And they're having three mower whips um, per day. Do you feed anything with it? Dry cow rolls, minerals, butt licks, bag flakes, anything like that? Yeah, we f uh, we don't feed any concentrate as such, but we do uh, bolus the cows at drying off, and um, they're offered uh, mineralised buckets as a topper. Most people dry cow, especially close up, because you they actually carve out here, don't they? Yeah, they carve here, yeah. Okay, and I think there's yeah, just there's calf a, popped up out of the grass yeah, there a, now. There's a calf just gone through there. Okay. So, most people, dry cows, calving cows, on grass, milk fever. Get any milk fever? Uh, or, talk to us about that. Yeah, we, have, um, we did have one case of milk fever last year, um, but I didn't really consider that to be a, to be a problem. It was an older cow, and... Um, She's actually calved, calved again this year with no problems. And that was out of what? And about 90. How many? How many cows did you carve yeah, last autumn? Yeah, that'd be um, roughly 90 cows and 50 heifers that calve at this time of year. Oh, correct. So one out of about 140. So that's about one percent. Yeah, yeah, pretty good going. Any idea how much this costs you, or how much you save doing this compared to, say, more the more standard dry cows in or feeding, etc.? Yeah, this is the cheapest form of dry cow feeding that we can find really. There's no bedding costs as in housing systems, you know, no making silage costs. At the moment we are having to put the mower through it but that's the only real cost that we've got so. Okay. And how do you know when it's ready to feed? When the first um, <laughs> batch of dry cows come that's uh, yeah, as soon as we start drying off, that's when we start feeding it. So. so if you locked up six to eight weeks beforehand, it'll get to seed head. That's going to be, it's mainly the fight, it's a real fibrous sort of... Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah, that's where we gain on the milk fever side, I think, because it is just like feeding glorified hay. Okay. Yeah. And how hard do they graze it down? What sort of residue are you left with? Uh, in the first, the first half of the field, they, they graze it down to about 1,500 uh, kilograms of dry matter per hectare, which would be similar to what you would expect your milking cows to do. Now that we're pre-mowing, um, the mower's taking it to 1450, so they're obviously eating down to that stubble. Having left it grow up like this and then graze it like this, does it have any uh, negative impact on the pasture? Can you, would, will you be using this in the autumn for grazing cows on? Yeah, we will start grazing this again as soon as we've finished calving. The milkers will come in here six, uh, six weeks after, which will be towards the end of October. Oh, right. So we'll have another Two, two grazings off it with the milkers off it. Okay, and do you move your uh, uh, standing hay paddock round each year or is it this, this paddock's going to be it because that's the way it is? Yeah, this is, this is the same paddock as we used last year, mainly because it's relatively close to the buildings and it's, it's just easier to get the cows and calves in. The cows that calve on the standing hay, the, these autumn calving cows now, seem to keep um, quite fit because they're obviously still 
grazing to an extreme, and I think that um, benefits them when they become milking. Okay, magic. Well, um, they're very fit. They're blooming good looking. Um, so, looks like it's working. Thank you very much, Chris. That will do for now.